Over the past eight years, I have hypnotized a little over 52,000 people. 700 events, being on stage every night, working with groups of 150 to 420 people, different city every night, six nights a week, three weeks a month, eight to 10 months out of the year, across the country, enabled me to begin to observe patterns. Patterns of thought, patterns of language, patterns of behavior. And out of that, I made some discoveries. I'm gonna share those discoveries with you today. The reason I'm able to share these discoveries is because I had a very insightful person ask me recently, well, you, you've, done so, you've done all this, traveled the country, hypnotized all these people, what did you learn? And I hadn't really asked that question of myself before. And so the first thing that popped into my mind was, uh, well, I learned that really weird stuff happens when you begin to mess with the unconscious. <laughs> really weird stuff. Uh, from what looks like if you just say, close your eyes, and you begin to give somebody suggestions to relax their feet, their legs, there's a certain type of people that just doing that cause them to sweat copiously, to moan, to flop, to vomit. It's actually ab reaction, which we're not going to go into, but I find that very weird. Another thing is that, uh, is that um, amazing, amazing things happen. For instance, change happens in an instant. And then it just gets reinforced and magnified until it becomes massive. People who've smoked three packs a day for 40 years come to one hypnosis session and leave, never wanting it again. Or they leave and lose 30 pounds and feel as if it was easy and automatic. It's, it's amazing. Um, woman fell and broke her arm at one of my events, because of course everything that has, could possibly go wrong has gone wrong at my events. And in an instant, using hypnoanesthesia, hypnoanalgesia on her, she went from laying on the floor with an obviously broken arm, possibly fractured hip and leg, uh, holding her breath and screaming and not allowing anyone to touch her. Using the power of the unconscious, she went in just an instant to relax, eyes open, by the time the paramedics got there a few minutes later laughing and ready to get onto the stretcher. So, weird things happen when you mess with the unconscious, amazingly miraculous. Change occurs in an instant. And the third thing is, I learned if you're not afraid to facilitate intense emotion in humans or allow them to experience intense emotions, then breakthroughs are possible. And I define a breakthrough as that moment when the impossible becomes possible. I believe that emotions determine your reality. It's no coincidence that emotions seem to be unconscious, an unconscious experience. They arise unbidden. Because the unconscious controls our behavior, and if emotions determine our reality, it's no coincidence that we experience emotions as being unconscious. What I mean by that is you don't consciously decide to have a feeling. You don't think, oh, I guess I'll be scared of that snake. <gasps> I suppose I'll be disgusted by that person's outfit. We don't say, hi, I'm going to be angry with you today. We don't say, I guess now is a good time to go through massive grief over the tragic loss of my best friend. We experience emotions as just popping up, unbidden, in a moment. And we do have a conscious choice once they arrive. But knowing that we experience them as unconscious, and knowing that uh, they determine our reality, gives us the highest leverage point to affecting them, affecting change in an instant. Changing the reality of our lives and our well-being in an automatic and easy way. Um, so, when I realized that was the highest leverage point, and I realized that if you want to create or facilitate change for someone, you can't be afraid of them touching their grief, moving through their pain, you can't be afraid to create experiences that most people are running away from so hard that they'll get upset at you just for suggesting that you put somebody through that. You can't be afraid that people are going to walk out of the room and have a problem. And I learned that because I only had one night with these people, and I had to facilitate massive change in an area that had been causing pain for them 
most of them, their whole lives, they tried everything else. Most people don't head for hypnosis first for their first remedy for anything. It's usually their last resort. Um, so what I did, I'm going to describe to you something I did. It's probably going to push your buttons. I would uh, do a therapy script where I would change the pain pleasure associations for people. So they'd come in and they'd be associating pain with stopping the behavior they wanted to change. And they'd be associating pleasure with continuing the behavior they wanted to change. So I just switched those around. And the way that I did that is first, I brought them through pain. I brought them through their childhood pain, not trauma, childhood pain, adolescent pain, guilt, sadness, anger, physical pain. I brought them all the way up and into their future. I had them experience their own death. I had them experience in, under hypnosis that they were lying on their hospital bed, racked with pain, in their last moments of life. They look down at their skin, they see it's gray, it's flaking. They're taking their last breaths and they notice this, the door to their hospital room slowly opening and the person who loves them the most walks in the room. I have them imagine, they can see the tears welling up in that person's eyes. That person comes to their bedside and I have them imagine that they're reaching up with their last ounce of dying strength, putting their arms around that person's neck and whispering with their last breath into their ear, I'm sorry, I love you, I'm sorry. And then I have them experience their life end as that person is left behind. And as you can imagine, at this point, most of the audience is crying. A couple of people have left. And I've continuously associated it with their disorder. And then in that moment, when they're at that highest leverage point, I have them make a choice right then. And you are so ready to make a choice because action follows emotion. So they make that choice and then I instantly bring them out of course and through release and forgiveness and pleasure and we begin to associate massive pleasure and the letters that you receive if if you are interested at all in facilitating or creating change for people you just can't be afraid to allow them to experience the emotions that they've been fighting and to allow them to use those emotions to automatically get exactly what they want because we're hardwired to avoid pain we're hardwired to gain pleasure it's so powerful. I was doing this for an audience of about 263 people in Bismarck, North Dakota. And after the uh, session, I was behind the table and this woman did something that most people don't do. She walked directly behind the table and she just grabbed me. And she, she was sobbing in my ear and she said, I'm 65 years old. When I was five years old, I was raped. And today I forgave that man. Thank you. And she looked at me with tears in her eyes, and you could see she was a different person, that her emotions had completely changed in that instant, and her reality had changed forever, in one day, by being willing to just go through it. So the model that I subscribe to has uh, a, few, a few basic assumptions in it. I'm going to share those with you. I just realized it's here, isn't it? I might have a slide with some basic assumptions on it. I might not. I think some of the basic assumptions are that the quality of your life is determined by the quality of where you live emotionally. Oh, there it is. Nope. Ah, the subconscious is motivated by emotion, not reason. And the subconscious controls all your behavior. That's, the, that's some of the basic assumptions that I found powerful and useful to work with. Not the truth, but definitely something to work with. The quality of your life is determined by where you live emotionally. The force that controls your life is human emotion. With the right emotion, you can unleash things you could never dream of. Action follows emotion, and we feel whatever meaning we give things. So I took all those. I took all the people I talked to whose experiences. I threw it into this book. I did 10 simple yet powerful techniques to change the way you feel in five minutes or less. And I noticed that what, what happened is that, um, I'm just going to show you the list in case you're curious, that if, if you want to show them the list, you could. Um, people, when they find out that you can affect your reality by changing your emotions, they immediately think that that means, 
oh, I, I can control my emotions, so uh, I'm just going to suppress them, I'm going to head towards this, I'm going to make sure to focus on that emotion, I'm just going to always feel this emotion. And that's not quite it, in my opinion. I don't think there's 4,000 feeling words, emotion words, because we're simply supposed to return to one emotion over and over again. I don't think that's the case. I don't subscribe to that. I think that uh, there's 4,000 emotion words because life is very richly nuanced when we go through our emotions. So the first thing, of course, the first step that I always encourage people was to, to feel the emotion, allow it to move through you. I believe that emotion, the word emotion means energy in motion. It means moving through. You can't move through the forest without being in the forest. And so you'll notice that the techniques here, for instance, uh, anger into calm, depression into happiness, lonely into connection, uh, frustration into excitement. It's all different emotions that work together. And in these uh, techniques, I found there's three main entry points. And the first entry point that's my favorite is to change the meaning. When you change the meaning of an interaction, change the meaning of a situation, your emotions automatically change. So it's not a lot of work after that. And if your emotions change, your reality changes. That's, I think, the highest leverage point because it really works with the consciousness and your levels of consciousness. Uh, I'm just going to tell you a quick story that I think illustrates that. It's my favorite story. It's called The Cookie Thief. And my favorite version of it is from uh, one of Douglas Adams' books in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy trilogy. So there's this character, Arthur, he's a British gentleman, and he has gone to the train station to catch his train, and he's early. So he decides he's going to work on the crossword puzzle in the newspaper. It's a particularly difficult one. He goes into the cafeteria, gets himself a package of cookies, a cup of coffee. He's got his newspaper with his crossword. It's a very busy cafeteria. There's no empty tables. So he sits down at a table across from this gentleman. He's got his newspaper. He's struggling with the clues, package of cookies in the middle of the table, his coffee just enjoying himself and all of a sudden the gentleman across the table from him just reaches over bold as daylight opens the package of cookies and takes one of his cookies of course he's completely shocked he does what any civilized red-blooded British gentleman would do he vigorously ignores it while this man sits there and robs him but he feels he has to take some kind of stance so he very deliberately and clearly reaches over himself and takes a cookie trying not to notice that the package is mysteriously already open. And making sure that the guy sees him eat the cookie and knows, these are my cookies, I saw what you did, but I'm going to be cool. And then the guy across the table reaches out and takes another cookie. Of course, at this point, Arthur is so shocked and appalled, but he didn't say anything the first time, so he just ignores it even more vigorously than before. And they continue like that, one after the other, taking a cookie until the package is gone, and Arthur's getting so steamed up, this thief stealing his cookies, the gall in front of everyone, acting as if it's nothing. And when the gentleman leaves, Arthur's still just so upset about it, he can't even finish his crossword. And it's a relief when his train is finally called. So he scoops up his newspaper, and there underneath his newspaper is his package of cookies. So, of course, the meaning changed instantly. And as soon as the meaning changed, the emotion changed. He went from outrage to guilt, embarrassment, horror. And reality changed in that moment. And that's the power of changing the meaning. Now, we're not going to get into techniques for that today, but I am going to give you a couple techniques uh, because I found that the, uh, the second entry point that I find is the easiest um, for people to work with to make sure that they get a change right away is to use the physical as the entry point. Uh, instead of trying to reason your way out of emotions, you can just use the physical. Because the emotion already affects the physical, right? We know when you're depressed, typically your shoulders sag and your face is held slack and you breathe up higher and shallow. shallow. Well, you can reverse engineer that and use the physical to affect the emotional. So we'll just, I'm just gonna give you experience of that right now. We're gonna do an exercise together. So here's what you're gonna do. We're gonna change your emotional state. Okay, first of all, you're gonna open your eyes a little bit wider and you're gonna furrow your brow a little bit. You're kinda of worried. And you're gonna, you're gonna pull down your lips a little bit. And then you're gonna start breathing up higher and kinda of shallow like. But don't hyperventilate, just. 
And then you start rubbing your head kind of hard. And we're going to add in some words. Oh, no. Oh, no. And get a little higher pitch. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, stop. Feeling a little different? Feeling a little different. All right. Shake it off. Okay, we're going to do another one. Okay, this time, you're going to bring your breathing down here. You're going to breathe slow in. And when you breathe out, you're going to kind of feel it breathing out. Like, you're going to get a little, little upturn at the corner of the mouth. And you're going to let your eyelids droop halfway. Now you're going to raise your arms up. And as you breathe out, you're going to cross them out of your head. You're going to add in some words. Yeah. 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 We got people laughing, people smiling. Okay, you can let. There's a big difference. You, you didn't decide I'm going to change my emotions. You just changed your body, and all of a sudden, it was a different moment. I'm going to give you one more. This is my favorite. You're going to turn the person next to you. You need a person next to you for this one. You're going to get a Cheshire cat grin. You're going to start nodding. You're going to start wiggling your eyebrows. You're going to start going, eh? 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 <laughs> that one was just for me. You guys are ridiculous. <laughs> that is ridiculous. <laughs> By the way, you're going to do that again now. That is a powerful meme. <laughs> Every time I've taught that to somebody, they can't stop themselves from doing it one or two more times, so you're in trouble. <laughs> that was the whole meme I wanted to spread. That's why I gave my TEDx talk. Huh? <laughs> All right. So change happens in an instant. It doesn't take a lifetime of struggle. Emotions determine your reality. Go towards them. Move through them. Emotions are the energy in your life. Vince Lombardi said, energy is the fuel that drives our success train. He wasn't just talking about physical energy. He was talking about emotional energy. The unconscious understands emotion, and therefore learning to influence the emotions, not suppress, but influence, is the highest leverage point to self-change. So it follows, we have these techniques that can change the emotional, therefore the unconscious reaction of a person, and since the unconscious controls most of our lives, these techniques can radically improve a person's well-being. So, um, use that or don't. <laughs> That's all.